All right. Every, yeah, every mounting tape supplier I'm aware of has helpful selection guides, okay? So they, they show you cross sections of the layers and everything like that. Uh, and they have the various prop layers and, what, and so on. As a matter of fact, there's one mounting tape that has a cross hatch cuts in it that allow air to escape when you're mounting because one of the uh, one of the things we want to avoid is for air to become entrapped underneath the plate, forming bubbles that result in um, we're now impressing too much in that area. And sometimes, uh, let's say that this is a plate image, this area here, and let's say that we have a circle that's not printing in the center of that of that in that area. If we have bubbles, even small bubbles around this, it's not uncommon for that rolling of the plate to start to move air, and the air becomes displaced and it gets under that clear area, and now it, the, bucket, the air pushes the floor of the plate up, and it starts to print. And I don't know if you've ever seen that. But you might start to get a soft, an image with soft edges. If you see something, something with soft edges in the center of a large void, you might have air trapped under that area of the plate. And here's another tip. You can get a hypodermic needle, you stick it in there, and you aspirate the air. And that little puncture that you make does not result in the plate tearing when you pull it off. So if you don't already have them, having a hypodermic needle for the purpose of aspirating air that gets on the surface of the plate might be an idea that you want to consider. So there are different thicknesses also, which brings it to something. When you order a press, or when you're considering what mounting tape you use, if you haven't already established that, the mounting tape thickness is a function of the overall print diameter of the assembly, the undercut of the cylinder, and the thickness of the plate. So, I have a cylinder. You know that the cylinder is undercut because you're going to put a tape and a plate on it. So you have to compensate for that growth by making that bare cylinder diameter small. Then you have the mounting tape and you have the plate on that. So, if I know what my bare cylinder diameter is, and I know the tape that I want to use, because that's a very important thing, I'm not going to select a tape thickness based on what my plate tape is. I'm, I'm not going to select a plate thickness based on the tape. I'm going to select a tape based on the uh, plate thickness. Because my plate thickness is more important than the thickness of the mount tape, although the thickness of the mount tape is important. So you, you have the diameter, you have the thickness of the plate, whatever's left, that's what that tape needs to be. And by and large, if you're running a narrow web press, you're probably using uh, something like point, you know, 0.38 or 0.44 mm mounting tape. And if you're running a wide web press, you're probably using a 0.51 or 0.56 mounting tape or something like that. And people differ. I remember us playing around with tapes that were extremely, plates that were extremely thin in that environment that I told you about where we had a liquid photopolymer because we could make the plate as thick as or thin as we wanted. Well, however we uh, supported the, the system, that would dictate the thickness. So we went to 35 thousandths, which I don't know if, you know, on all this stuff. So you, you can have all kinds of variation. Now, foam tapes are usually a little bit thicker than, I found, than the hard vinyl tapes. And I think that's probably I can't say this for sure, but I think it's probably because it's anticipated that the foam tape is going to compress on and, the, and the, the vinyl tape is not. Whether or not that's true is not too important. Now, cutting to minimize loss. 
I'm going to share with you, because we're in India and because you're starting up, most of you are new in this, trying to do better. Uh, I know that money doesn't fall off of trees, so we want to minimize take loss. Okay? And uh, in narrow web, invariably, I see they have a roll of mounting tape, and they have a cylinder, and they just put that all on there and spin the cylinder and cut the plate. And even if the plate tape is short, the plate is short, they put the plate on there and then they have all this excess foam to trim off and throw away. And you know that mounting tape is very expensive. Well, you might be able to tolerate that on a narrow wet press, but on wide wet press, especially where you have such large situation, there's an opportunity to cut uh, tape so that you're using the absolute minimum and you're not throwing a bunch of tape in it. And the way I did that when I found it for wide web presses, is I had a carpenter square. Right? Is that what you call it here, carpenter square? And then on that carpenter square, I take some of that my preferred was the, 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 uh, the hard vinyl tape. And I leave the release liner on there because the silicone, you know, the, the silicone release, the other side of it is still a little slippery. So now I put on here, it helps it ensure the most economic cutting of the tape. So I lay it on there, I leave my cut, and I may take it, and let's say this table surface is taken, and I may come over here and I might not go to that edge. And I make my cut, and I take my square, and I make my cut, and now I have the mounting tape I want, but I have a strip here. That strip, I will take it, and I will adhere it somewhere, just stick it like that, and I will reuse that. So now, or use it, not reuse it. Next time I'm out, the next plate I'm out, I measure it. I use my head and say, okay, I've got a strip that's like this. I got that. I can combine those two. And I'm constantly folding the strips that I've left behind into the, the next mounted thing. Uh, being careful that the seam doesn't fall in the wrong place and all that. But I'm constantly consuming the, the, the material I stripped away because I've cut the tape very precisely with a square and I have rectangles that I can work with. I'm cutting freehand and that sort of thing, that does not lend itself to it. So I like to use a square that does not stick. And oh, by the way, the reason I have that silicone layer is when I lay that square on there, if I did not have that on there, it would stick. But now I can just lift the, lift the square up. And I lift it from this end. I peel it up this way, relatively it comes up. And I continue to roll on my business put it sticking the strips maybe on a little bar you know, or something in some obscure little corner, and I can take it and incorporate it into the mount of the next one, okay? So, the setup for mounting, whether it's now, well, you have to decide for yourself where you spend your time and your effort as you go along uh, building your thing, but it's not exclusive wide web. If you feel that you are losing a lot of tape because we just wrapped the whole cylinder and cut off the excess, the square, can, square using the square can be can, uh, can be brought to that situation as well. So we have a, an ergonomic table with adequate surface area to accommodate that. Perhaps a, a narrow web press would require less area than a wide web press. Okay? You want a hard, smooth, cutting surface. I found that for my from micro tables like kitchen countertops, and that sort of thing. Works very well. I want a place to adhere those remnants, okay? Sometimes we just have a little tube. So all you have is a little strip at the leading edge of that remnant sticking on that, and it's in, in a no traffic area where nobody, it could just be, it could be against a wall here. It's just a little tube and I stick it, and it's gonna be protected by dust. And because I'm moving, and I'm mounting, I'm mounting, it's not sitting there for weeks gathering dust. Generally, that day, the next day, or the day after, that piece is going to be used and it doesn't have dust or any problem like that. Okay, so I want a place to adhere remnants. 
and I'm always on the lookout for opportunities to use remnants in the next month. Okay? I want to keep the environment clean so that dust particles do not adhere to the mounting tape because, as you probably know, and this is obvious, if you have a little grain of sand on, uh, stuck on the tape, when you put the plate on there, you're going to have a bump and it's going to create print quality issues. And you want to handle it with clean hands. I usually wash my hands more than a doctor because I was mounting and I would go, next time I mount, I'm moving cylinders and I have reason to wash my hands again. I need to have clean hands so that as I invariably touch the surface of the tape with my fingers, I'm not depositing oils and I'm not depositing dirt or anything like that. I have nice, clean, dry hands. <clears throat> so, the plate back coating Coatings are variable. Are, and what I mean by that is this plate back coatings. Uh, when we mounted the rubber plates onto that very, very aggressive 3M sticky back that everybody that I knew in the industry was using, it was almost rule of thumb that you would blend 25% shellac or 50%, I forget what the ratio was, but not even 25% shellac to 75% normal propyl alcohol, stir it up and brush it onto the back of the plate because that mounting tape was so aggressive that it was difficult to remove. Uh, in some cases, uh, the tape is not as aggressive as that, but you have a large plate, and because of the large surface area, again, the plate becomes hard to remove. So it was almost rule of thumb, we're going to apply this shellac on there, and what it creates is a release layer. It, ha it adheres, but it shears, and you're able to uh, peel away the plate, okay? Well, that thickness is variable. And in manufacturing, we want to either eliminate the variables or control them. And it's very difficult to control how thick that film of shellac or any other. Uh, I know a client that used to use a spray every time. It, especially when you're doing fine printing, process printing, you can't afford that variable. It's variable in adhesion, it's an adhesion. Depending on how you apply it, sometimes it might not stick well enough. So if we can eliminate that, we're better off. Now, but the plate, but applying plate, plate coatings introduces a variable that we're not interested in.